Three kings from Persian lands afar To Jordan follow the pointing star And this the quest of the travelers three Where the newborn king of the Jews may be Gifts they bear for the king, gold incense, mother offering. The star shines out with a steadfast ray. The kings to Bethlehem make their way, and there in worship they bend the knee as Mary's child in her. Gifts they show to the king, gold incense, mother offering. Thou child of man, go to Bethlehem. The kings are traveling, travel with them. The star of mercy, the star of grace, shall lead thy heart to its resting place. Gold incense, myrrh, thou canst not bring, offer thy heart to the infant king.
everybody. Welcome to Claverton's first ever online carol service here at St Mary's. We have readings coming up by various residents of the village, so it's a very Claverton Christmas. Although this format has enabled us to bring in music from elsewhere and push the boundaries of what you might normally find in here at St Mary's. We're a parish church for Claverton Village and Claverton Down and are in a benefice with Barthampton as well. St Nick's are not doing our own separate carol service this year so welcome to people from all over the place, those who already regularly come to church and people at different stages of our faith journey. I hope you're sitting comfortably wherever you are and have access to mince pies which we would normally serve in church as we enjoy being together. If you're watching this as it premieres, you can still come for virtual mulled wine on Zoom straight after this service. I'll give the Zoom details at the end. At Christmas time, we delight again to hear the story of the journey to Bethlehem, the song of the angels, the surprise of the shepherds, and their joy as they found Jesus in the manger. But lest we forget he was born to poverty, we remember at this season all who are hungry or cold. And lest we forget he became a refugee, we remember the stranger and the lonely among us. And lest we forget he felt the pain of life and death. We remember this year more than ever those who are ill or anxious or bereaved. And because he came for our salvation, let us in heart and mind go once again to Bethlehem to hear the message of the angels and worship afresh the Son of God. Come on in. The Lord Jesus himself taught his followers to call God Father. And so as we begin, let's bring our prayers to the heavenly throne through him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever.
The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Yet in thy dark 
sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin, pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his word and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. 
Then the angel left her. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Shepherds are the first after the birth of Jesus to hear the news. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, or I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people today in the town of david the lord this will be a sign to you you will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in the manger suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with an angel praising god and saying glory to god in its highest and on earth peace to men on whom favor rests
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Many of us at St Mary's are pleased to be long-time friends with the patron of Claverton, Charlie Scream, who grew up in the village here at Manor Cottage. Charlie's a minister in London where he has recorded some Christmas thoughts for us today coming from that part of the Bible that we've just heard. We're grateful for this recording being available to us. This year of all years, we could do with some good news. And in Luke's Christmas account, a bunch of shepherds are doing a perfectly normal night shift when an angel of the Lord appears with good news of a great joy for all the people. And it's news about a baby. And since you and I are part of all the people, then even in COVID times, Luke thinks this baby is good news for all of us, and we'd better understand why. Jesus is a royal baby, but I've two ways that he is the strangest royal baby ever. It's been a good decade for royal babies, hasn't it? George and Charlotte and Louis and Archie. Not since my childhood have royal weddings and royal babies been such big news. But compared to British royal births, Jesus is first strangely hyped. This day, in the city of David, a saviour who is Christ the Lord. See, our royal family, they do a, a nice line in self-deprecation, as if it was just, you know, any young couple having a baby uh, who screams a bit and keeps them up at night. But at the same time, they are all about the bloodline and the titles. His Royal Highness, Prince George of Cambridge, he is third in line to the throne, which is quite a big deal. But the angel gives Jesus all the titles. And not just every title going, but the specific titles that other people are currently using the king in Jerusalem, the emperor in Rome. These people are not used to sharing power. But the claim is, this is good news of great joy for all the people 
because Jesus is king of all the people, then and now. He is Christ, he is David, he is the Lord. But as well as strangely hyped, this is strangely degrading. The shepherds, they are given a sign so that they can recognise this baby. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Uh, Many of us are so used to the story that we miss the shock of that. Royal babies in London are born in the Lindo wing of St Mary's Hospital, where the cheapest birth costs something like 10 grand, and it goes up from there. But the real St Mary gives birth in a barn and lays her child in a cattle trough. Can you imagine the scandal if our government decided to save some money by putting a royal mother through that? This hyped king of all the people is treated literally like an animal at his birth. Why? Well, the pattern, it follows him through his life. Incredible power and wisdom, but rejected and humiliated and killed. And this is how he is good news of great joy. It's because he didn't just come to rule like a king or cheer us up like Santa or advise us like a government scientist, but he came to save us like a vaccine. Good news of great joy, for unto you is born this day a saviour. Isn't that the strangest of all? The birth of Prince George was a a big deal, but it wasn't a rescue. Doesn't involve being treated like an animal either for him. And the adult Jesus explained it like this. The Christ should, must suffer and rise from the dead and repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations. The hype and the degradation, they come together because he has to forgive our sins. The king of all the people offers forgiveness to all nations because he suffered and died for all. So if you would like joy instead of lockdown bleakness, then can I invite you to consider this royal birth again. My sins... Mark me out as one of royal Jesus's enemies. And yet he came to earth in degradation to die for me, to take the the punishment for my sins, to save me and to bring me peace with God, a peace he offers to all people. He is a saviour. Great news of great joy to all the people. Happy Christmas. But is it really great news for all people? Some of us may feel it's it's not for us. O come all ye faithful, are we full of faith? What if we struggle to believe words from God? And what if we've been unfaithful to our own promises and in our own relationships with God and with other people? Some of us have tried praying and got tired of not seeing an answer. O come all ye faithful. This next Christmas song is a new one written this year by and for people like that. O come all you unfaithful. The video is of real people's reactions on hearing and processing the words of this song for the first time.
shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name. He gave the right to become children of God 
children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Now, if you would be interested in thinking further about this Christ who was born for people like us, and maybe you would like to talk about it with other local people, there is a COVID safe opportunity coming up on Wednesday evenings in January. Surely Christianity is limited, prescriptive, flawed, just another religion, not for me. Other things were more important. That's what I used to think. Going through life, I had tons of looming questions. Why are we here? Is there a God? What happens to us when we die? What's all the fuss about the Bible and Jesus anyway? I looked in lots of different places, spoke to a lot of different people. What I really needed was a space to ask those questions and to find some answers. I came along to Christianity Explored and I came out taken aback and with a lot more questions than I'd gone in with, but wanting to find out more. I went back week after week. My view of the world and of God changed, but started to make so much more sense as I read these reports of this man named Jesus, whose life was just so radically different to my own and to anyone else's I'd known. So I'm inviting you to do exactly what I did and join a group of people from different backgrounds and walks of life to challenge, to ask questions, to explore. Come and find out about who Jesus really is. That's something I will be leading on Zoom in January and would love you to join me. Do please let me know if you're interested. See the church website if you're not sure how to contact me. Now we've got one more traditional carol and then virtual mulled wine and mince pies on Zoom. Details on the screen now and probably in the description on YouTube as well if you miss them here. Come along just for a few minutes uh, and greet others that we re sadly can't see in the flesh at this time. Thank you to everyone who's recorded readings for this service. I know some of you had lots of fun and many attempts to get it right. After the final carol, if anyone wants to keep watching before coming over to Zoom, we've got a whole load of outtakes for those who like watching You've Been Framed. Now may the joy of the angels, the wonder of the shepherds, the trusting obedience of Mary and Joseph, the determination of the wise men and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas time. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>
after the birth of Jesus to hear the news. <laughs> Shepherds are the first after the birth of Jesus to hear the news. Heavenly host appeared with the, with the angel. <laughs> 